Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to ask one of the biggest questions that faces the nation when it comes to shakes, malts, what to use. Malt powder, malt liquid, before we do, do want to thank our episode sponsor, iRice and Co. They're based out of Philadelphia, but they ship all over the country. Uh, a lot of distributors hold their product. Basically, anything that you want in ice cream or on ice cream, they do water ice, hot fudge flavors, do a great uh, double rich dark chocolate paste. They've got it all. Uh, iRiceandCo.com, iRiceCo.com. The link is down below. Click on the link, have a look at all of their products. Uh, talk to Rod and Nicole, the whole crew up there, very, very well versed in the ice cream industry. They can help you out with your flavor and topping needs. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm a big malt guy. In fact, I do remember a stint. We had to have ourselves a bit of an intervention when we had our store in Australia because the one thing that I loved at the beginning of every single shift, the one thing that kind of took the edge off it for me was a double caramel, double malt, caramel malt in a 20 ounce cup. Craziness, but so good. I've had a lot of people ask me over the years about the difference between liquid malt and powdered malt and which is the best, which is more convenient. Let's look at the pros and cons. Uh, I definitely lean one way on this, just to let you know. Liquid malt made by a lot of different manufacturers gives you the flavor that you want, can sometimes be a little bit bitter, depending on how much you put in. You've really got to be very careful because it is quite strong, a little bit stronger than powdered malt. Um, and look, in the grand scheme of things, it does the job. It's more convenient. It probably doesn't clump like powdered malt. Um, so from a convenience factor and a storage factor, sure, that's probably the way to go. However, I believe in my heart of hearts, I can feel it in my waters, that most people order malt, not necessarily for the malt taste, but for that little bit of grittiness that it gives into the shake. It's a little bit of mouthfeel. Um, I'm not gonna say a sandy consistency, but those malt lovers uh, certainly know what I'm talking about. Hello? So what I'm saying is that a powdered malt fulfills two roles. It does give you that kind of malty flavor, takes the sweet edge off a particular strawberry shake, vanilla shake, caramel shake, chocolate shake, but it also gives the customer a little bit of mouthfeel. And for me, that's worth the process perhaps of maybe having it clump a little bit when it gets moisture in the air, um, storage issues, that kind of thing. You've got to kind of keep that product moving through. It can solidify in the can, but for me, uh, I'm a big, big believer in saying that malt should always be powder. Now, prove me wrong. If you do liquid malt, uh, drop a comment down below. I'd be interested in your pros and cons. Don't think you're gonna convert me. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm a powdered guy through and through. So that's just a quick video, folks. Again, um, I think it's all about what we call the organoleptic experience. It's giving customers multiple levels of that sensory perception or sensory experience. And, and powdered malt gives you that crunch in the taste as well as the flavor. I think it's a winner, prove me wrong. That's all we have for this episode. Again, thank you very much to iRice & Co for all of their sponsorship and all of our sponsors, they're great. They allow us to provide this content for you. Please support them. Go to uh, scoopschool.com, click on the suppliers page. They're all there. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, just if you're hanging around and you wanna watch another one, right here is your subscribe button, click on that. Down here is a video I'm pretty sure you're gonna like. And over here, we'll bring you into Scoop School. Come on. Keep on scooping. See you in the next video.